Welcome everybody. Good day. Good morning, Helen. I'm right here. Good morning, Karen. Feel free to say hello. Let us know who's here, how you're doing, if you still have your sanity. <laughs> you know what? So this, I actually, I bought this for my husband, wishing I was fishing, um, but it's very fitting for right now because the, the universe is telling us all to pause. And we'll talk, we talked about it yesterday, we'll talk more about it today. That was a total unconscious coffee cup choice this morning and that's really funny. Happy Friday, Christine. Good morning, Gina. Maria says good morning and happy Friday. I'm doing wonderful, thanks for asking, Christine. Yeah, we have a, we have a, a, a motorcycle trip planned tomorrow, so that's fun. There's a, there's a bar we like to go to a couple hours west, so that's fun. Um, we went for the first time last year and we're going again tomorrow with a group of friends and the weather's supposed to be really nice. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm excited to have a relaxing weekend. Daniela, good morning, Jackie from Bonita Springs, Florida. Welcome, welcome. Jackie says, greetings, fine friends. Feeling crappy after a heart scan. I hate contrast. Ah, <sighs> Jackie, text me. Let's talk. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Karen A. Margo is here, sans sanity. Well, maybe we can find it in today's lesson. Sunita, good afternoon from London, UK. Welcome, welcome. Good morning, Debbie. Oh, so Jackie put a bunch of those motorcycle emojis, and I was like, is that, like, letters? Like, did her message get weird? That's funny. So, uh, if you are new to me, my name is Jackie Mancuso. I'm joining you from Northern Illinois. Uh, off of Insight Timer, I do a whole slew of things, but here on Insight Timer, I talk about astrology, and then we pull oracle cards for the collective, to see how we can best utilize the energy available. I love astrology so much because it just gives us like a map. I, I take astrology like a map. Um, it lays it out, right? And sometimes you can follow the path and sometimes you can make your own path. You don't always have to follow the map to a T. Debbie from Arizona, positive healing energy. Thanks Debbie for all of us. Hello, Dr. Monica. Good morning, Jackie. Going to Catalina Island for our 30th anniversary. I don't know where Catalina Island is, but any island sounds like a wonderful place to be. So today, guys, we got some in California. Cool. That sounds awesome, Dr. Monica. I hope you guys enjoy that. Today we're talking about a few things going on in the sky. There's a few things going on in the sky. In the description of today, I wrote about how the sun is opposing Pluto. And I guess when I was making my notes for today's episode, I kind of brushed over the rest of the chart. Um, we have a Cardinal Grand Cross that is coming exact tonight. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about Venus stationing retrograde tomorrow. We'll touch a little bit on Chiron stationing retrograde on Sunday, and then also um, the sun moves into Leo. So we're wrapping up cancer season. We are closing out the first water sign of this season's zodiac wheel. Uh, so emotions can be high right now, and this Cardinal Grand Cross energy, the more I dove into it, the more I it helped me understand why everyone right now feels like complete insanity is a good way to say it. So we're going to start with the Grand Cross. Tonight, um, yeah, tonight. I mean, I mean, you don't need to get like super specific on the time that this is happening because this energy has been building and building and building probably for a week. Like it's been, it's been building and building. Um, and then it comes exact tonight, and then the energy will start to dissipate. So just know that. Um, so a cardinal grand cross means that there are four planets. 
the nodes of the moon are in this, but four objects in the sky that are exactly 90 degrees apart. So what we have going on in this cardinal grand cross today, and I'm saying cardinal because it's happening in the four cardinal signs of the zodiac. The cardinal signs are the ones that start the season. So when we have this, this cardinal grand cross energy, it can feel like we're being pulled to start four brand new projects right now. Like all of our energy wants to start this one and this one and this one and this one all at the same time. So we might just be feeling like we don't know where to start. So we have this cardinal grand cross, which includes the sun at 29 degrees of Cancer, Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn, the south node at 29 degrees of Libra, and the north node at 29 degrees of Aries. So those are the four cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. Um, this can feel like having a lack of patience, um, wanting to just get it done and get it over with in these four areas of your life. And like you want it now, um, Veruca Salt energy. So the sun, let's start with talking about the sun across from Pluto, um, because that's like the major one that I talked about in the the show notes. Um, so the sun across from Pluto, Pluto is the planet that exposes shadows and secrets. Pluto digs to the depths of wherever he is and he's just like, hey, look at it. Look at what's down here. It's been buried for a long time. Let's look at it. So I was intuiting this. If the sun were right next to Pluto, that would, to me, feel like shining a light on all of it to um, to wash away the darkness, you know, like the light would be right there. But the sun is across from Pluto. So to me, that's like casting all of the shadows, um, exposing a lot of shadows, exposing a lot of secrets that may have been down there. Sun opposite Pluto can be an uncomfortable time in general of just like, hey, you need to look at this right now. Like this is the darkest part of it. Actually, that feels kind of refreshing to say it. The sun opposite Pluto exactly. Like, this is the darkest part. So whatever difficulty you're going through right now, today is the darkest. The sun is exposing the darkest part of it. So if that gives you any kind of reprieve, uh, a breath of fresh air, knowing that it's probably not going to get worse, um, that this is like the peak. So this is a time, um, this previous week, and probably through the next week. This is a time of seeing what's been buried. Sun opposite Pluto. And the nodes of fate are involved here as well. So we might have this like faded destiny feeling like I have to take care of this right now. I have to, north node, I have to move forward down my highest path. Um, you may be feeling really pulled strongly to do that. Or south node, I have to let go of this pattern. I have to get rid of this, I don't know, curse comes up, but it's not a curse. I'm not, a, I'm not into the witchy stuff. Curses, hexes, I choose not to play with that stuff. Um, but it's like the karma, like I, I have to, it might feel like you have to totally just rid yourself of something that you've been carrying perhaps for lifetimes. What's interesting about this Grand Cross is there's this like dichotomy of energy. So I mentioned that it's in the cardinal signs. So our energy is being harshly pulled in four directions to get going on something, to start something, to take the first step on something. But this is happening at the anoretic degree, the 29th degree, the last degree of all these cardinal signs. So to me, the 29th degree is like the degree of mastery. It, it represents like the last step um, in this lesson. So this can feel like we're being pulled to start the final step in four areas. Like, like you know that, that you have one more step to go and then it's the new beginning and you can feel like your leg is shaking trying to like stand up from behind you to take that next step. This can also feel like you're being pulled strongly to take the first step in four last chapters, like 
four final chapters of four different books. Um, it's like you're you're trying to turn the first page, but you're trying to do it to four different books, and you only have two hands. So it's it's a very uh, interesting play. The last degree of these cardinal signs. I hope you guys are understanding this like oddness, and that could be why things have been feeling so strange for us for the last week. Um, Helen, actually, was the one who introduced me to an astrologer named Molly McCord. She's wonderful. She puts out YouTube podcasts twice a week. I recommend her strongly. Um, but she has a way of handling gr uh, grand crosses in general that I'm going to borrow. So you have this energy pulling you in four different directions. And what are you able to do is to sit in the middle and take a pause and just stop and just observe and just be because the wheels are going to keep on turning and what we have control over is our peace of mind is our sanity so if we keep trying to run at these four different areas all at once like that's not possible for a human being um, and this is amplified especially because of what we talked about yesterday Mars opposite Saturn this is still a pretty tight opposition. They're only one degree away at this point. Um, and that is a hard stop energy as well. Let's talk a little bit more about what in astrology wants us to pause. We have Venus stationing retrograde tomorrow. Retrogrades are usually always about reviewing, reassessing, rethinking. You have to pause to do that stuff, right? You can't really like review while you're moving forward. You gotta stop. So we have Venus retrogrades starting tomorrow and we have Chiron retrogrades starting on Sunday. A lot of opportunity to pause. We also have uh, Pluto, Saturn, and Neptune. They're all retrograde right now. So if you've been like pushing forward as hard as you can, my goodness, please just stop. Just stop and let the universe take care of it for a moment. Um, this actually, this just came through. This might be difficult as the sun enters Leo because, well, so the sun has been in cancer. Cancer is a cardinal sign. So we've been feeling this energy of like, ooh, I have these emotions. I want to act on them. I want to do something with these emotions. So now that we're moving into fixed fire of Leo, fixed fire, um, the fixed energies, I know this because I'm a Taurus, the fixed energies are the ones that will keep pushing their heels in the sand even when there's nothing left to do, like the fixed signs will take all of their energy just to keep the steady movement. So if you're able to choose today, tomorrow, to consciously pause, that fixed fire energy of Leo season from tomorrow until August 22nd, that fixed fire sun can help you to sustain the pause. Fixed energy helps us sustain. So if you're able to choose to slow down right now, that will help you throughout this Leo season. That doesn't mean that if you're not able to pause today, you know, if you have some obligations throughout the next week, that doesn't mean that you're screwed for the whole Leo season. It just, just be aware that it might be a little bit more difficult to slow down if you choose to go into Leo season with um, that pause. I digress. That was, that came out of nowhere. So tomorrow, Venus stations retrograde. That means Venus will appear to be moving backwards in the sky. It's just an optical illusion. Um, but she will be retrograde until September 3rd. This invites us to pause on bringing things in. So um, she will be traveling from 28 degrees of Leo back to 12 degrees of Leo. So this is a time of reviewing what you've attracted into your life. It's a hard pill to swallow, but whatever your reality is, you called it in. And if there's parts of your reality that are difficult, that you are having a hard time uh, coping with, handling, dealing with, accepting, if you're having a hard time uh, just with anything in your life, that's why it's 
beneficial to ask what's the lesson in all of this because you called it in you called it in to learn something so if you're pushing it away if you're trying to get away from it it's gonna get harder but if you're able to take this venus retrograde to review what have i attracted and everything in your reality is what you have attracted all the blessings too you know review and celebrate what you've brought in that you're very grateful for this is also a time, Venus retrograde now until early September, to review what it is you truly desire. Um, and this came up yesterday too, I can't remember exactly how, but it's like reviewing, like, am I really on track to reach the life that I want? Or am I just going and pushing forward because this is what I'm supposed to do? Because this is what I'm conditioned to do? Because I'm running on autopilot? So Venus retrograde gives us that opportunity to really slow down and choose. Do I still want this? Is this still what I have my sights set on? Is this still what I want to bring into my life? Hello, Bonnie. therapy time. I think therapy time is all, all of the time. And therapy doesn't have to be a bad word. I can go on forever. I'm going to stop myself there. Stacy says, on Monday, you said nothing happens to you. Everything happens for you. And I've been using that as a reminder all week. I love that. I love that um, saying. I pull it out of my toolbox all the time when people are going through hard times. Uh, yeah, it's a really good reminder. I'm glad that you picked up on that. So Venus retrograde from tomorrow until September 3rd will allow you to review what you're attracting into your life. On Sunday, the 23rd, we also have Chiron stationing retrograde. And I'm just going to throw it out there. I've been throwing around a whole lot of astrology today. If it's, if it's hard to grasp, don't try too hard. Take what resonates, leave the rest. Uh, it's okay if this doesn't all make sense. But Chiron is an asteroid. He's very prevalent in astrology. He represents the wounded healer. So it's like the, the wound that we carry. So he will be retrograde from July 23rd until the day after Christmas, December 26th. He is moving over a very small portion of the chart. So he'll start at 19 degrees of Aries and he's only moving back to 15 degrees of Aries. So if you have any planets between 15 and 19 degrees of Aries, you might be reviewing <laughs> wounds around that type of energy. So I'm just going to throw it out there because I'm super transparent. I um, I looked at the degrees today and then I looked at my chart and I was like, man, that makes so much sense. This is going to be passing right over my Mercury placement. Uh, Mercury represents your thoughts, your ideas, your communication, your logic. And I've been getting so many messages lately about like, your mind is sabotaging yourself. Um, yeah, I did a whole reading this morning and it was like, you have too many obligations to your thoughts. And I was like, what does that even mean? And then I saw Chiron will be retrograding over my Mercury. Oh, of course, that makes sense, you know? Um, so Chiron retrograde might feel like reviewing your inner wounds. And then especially in Aries, reviewing how our independence might be limited reviewing how we have kind of um, sabotaged our own independence. We might be reviewing how we um, don't understand ourselves, like how a wound can impact the ability to understand ourselves. Um, yeah, Chiron retrograde to me, and I, I feel like I say this all the time, feels like a really good time for shadow work, inner child work, but I, again, I feel like I say that with every transit, like, ooh, yeah, let's get to the dark, deep stuff, let's let's look in there. But Chiron retrograde, for real, to me, feels like, like shadow work, like getting down and saying, like, getting real with, yes, I made that choice when I was younger, that doesn't mean I, made, I need to make that choice for the rest of my life. So it doesn't right? It doesn't need to be a hard time, like Chiron retrograde, reviewing our inner wounds. That sounds so difficult, 
but anything in astrology is all what you make it. The energy is available. You still have free will to choose how to use that energy. So if you're able to accept what you've attracted into your life, Venus retrograde, you can use that as fuel to say, all right, I want some of my independence back. Like, how do I do that? Let's have the courage and the wisdom to go inside and see what I've been hanging on to, maybe, that's preventing me from attracting what I really do want. Shadow work is what I do every day, says Susie. Bonnie, okay, but you think every season is shadow work season? I do. Because it, it can be. It is. Then, we're going to end on a high note because I'm known for my positivity. Um, so the sun is entering Leo. The sun enters Leo tomorrow, so we're going to be in Leo season. Any babies born from tomorrow until August 22nd, they will be Leo babies. Uh, Leo is a really fun energy. It's a very energetic energy. It's a fire sign. It is passionate. It is ambitious. It is driven. Uh, Leo is ruled by the sun. So we have an opportunity for the next month to shine. Literally shine. To let your light shine. To just show up as you are. Um, Leo, in my feels, is the generous king. It's ruled by the heart, so it's all about leading with love the whole season. Leading with love, um, and I can... <laughs> Mercury and Aries, guys, very simplistic with my, with my speech. I say the words leading with love, and I have like a hundred examples in my mind of what that means, and all I do is keep repeating. Leading with love. So leading with love meaning like... It's your first choice, leading with love. Uh, leadership qualities, like, hey, I, I will be the example. I'm going to do it with love. Watch me. Um, fixed fire. Leo is fixed fire. So we have the energy available to bring this steadfast passion into whatever we're doing. But that's tomorrow. Today, I still invite you to consciously pause consciously pause feel into that that cardinal grand cross energy caroline says my son is a leo they are the best ever susie yes i'm working hard on my inner child wound because i suffer from agoraphobia due to my mother narcissistic legacy you know sometimes it's okay to pause the hard work also. Not directing this at you, it's just because it, it came up. Um, but pause, like whatever you're doing, everyone, what, what can you pause? What's calling for a pause? Did you guys um, watch yesterday's live? We asked like, what's calling for a pause? I don't have the brain space to go back there right now. It's recorded, it's on my YouTube channel. If you guys wanna watch yesterday's, um, oracle reading it was all about what's calling for a pause and how do we call in our dream life search my name on youtube go watch that or join our spiritual community the group i have on insight timer it's called our spiritual community um, our lovely friend bonnie puts the text updates text recaps of the cards there um, so you can always go there to review what we talked about as well I'm just taking a conscious pause. We're going to ask, um, so I want to use the Star Codes Astro Oracle deck. I want to ask how to make the best use of this Grand Cross energy. If you guys showed up um, in the middle of my explanation, just real quick, this grand cross energy. Actually, look at the cross on this, this deck. I didn't even realize that. That's what a grand cross looks like in the sky. We have a planet at the top, a planet at the bottom, a planet on each side. And it's like the energy is being pulled in four directions. Grand cross, can f and especially today's grand cross, the last degree of the signs that get stuff going. So it feels like 
the first step in four different last chapters are all calling for all of your attention right now. So how do we make the best use of this cardinal Grand Cross energy? I invite you to send your energy into this deck asking for your highest messages from your highest guides, from your highest self. I do group readings, so I will allow three cards to fall out of the deck for us. Yeah, I like that. Um, and then I uh, invite you to use your intuition to settle on if any of these messages are calling to you more strongly. So surprise, the whole reading is for all of us, but if you feel any type of way, or if anything in your incarnation changes when I hold up a certain card, that could just be your spirit guides saying like, hey, that's a super strong message, that's the one. If you don't feel anything for any of the cards, then the whole reading is just all for you. Sister Hazel. And they, they came out real fast. So here's the back of card number one. The back of card number two. And the back of card number three. And I'll show them one more time how to make the best use of this grand cross. Here's the back of card number one. The back of card number two. and the back of card number three. Let us know in the chat which card or cards might be calling to you. And it's also, so before I read all the card numbers, I wanted to mention this earlier. Um, if you have like a base understanding of the houses of astrology or if you're able to like hop on the internet and just check out the the base understanding of the houses of astrology it can help you um feel a little bit of peace of mind just to know which houses are being affected by this cardinal grand cross so you would look at the 29th degree of the cardinal signs 29th is the last degree of the signs, knowing that the zodiac moves counterclockwise. So you would look to see which house the, these four placements fall in. It would be 29 degrees of Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Um, I glanced really quick at my chart and it was like, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. Just with all the, the energy that I've been handling in my life recently, yeah, it made a lot of sense. Um, so how do we best make best use of this Grand Cross? Helen's working with two, Susie three, and three, Jackie all, Susie one, Romeo one, Bonnie two, Kirby one for the heart, two for the head, three, no special vibe, cool. Karen A one, Caroline two, Kara two, Sunita one, Anastasia two and three, Gina one, Chantel three, Yvonne one and three strong, feeling a little of two, Christine one and two the strongest, but also feeling all three. Karen one and two, Kelly one, Jennifer one, Jean two as always, Carol three, Daphne one and two. Bart three. Sorry, Susie. Romeo is your chicken. You guys were having a whole conversation about adopting my chicken yesterday. I don't know what's going on with that. All my chickens are ladies. <laughs> and she is not up for adoption. I, you know, I'm firm on that. She's my little baby. Oh, Bonnie, I love that. Bonnie, because Sunita mentioned earlier she doesn't know how to pause. Bonnie said, yin yoga taught this type A how to pause. Um, all right, 
Uh, and actually, the chicken that was that got loose yesterday that was hanging out by my front window, her name is Poopy. So there we go with that. No one is abducting my chicken. No, no, I do not consent. Non-consent. All right. Uh, how to make the best use of this Cardinal Grand Cross? Card number one brings us Palace Athena, and the message is think. Pallas Athena speaks of a sharp and guarded intellect. Mythological Athena is the goddess of wisdom, intellect, skill, strategy, and defense. Her father Zeus swallowed her mother, Metis, Metis, I don't know Greek, sorry guys, Metis, goddess of wise counsel and planning, possibly to hide her from his spouse, Hera. Athena gave her father a pounding headache, then leapt fully grown and completely armored from her father's forehead. This powerful goddess could beat the males at their own game and challenged the world to never underestimate feminine strength and wisdom. Pallas Athena loans you the ability to walk into a boardroom or other professional situation and be ready to take on any challenge completely in your power with just the right words at hand. Just ask her. Pallas Athena is within you. Speak to her. She can help you navigate, oh my gosh, the echelons of power, E-C-H-E-L-O-N-S, echelons of power. Develop real skills, craft, articulation, and tech genius with her support and your concentration. Connect your trained knowledge natural abilities, and that spark of divine fire. Just don't overdo the intellectual defenses. Make sure your intelligence and ability to rationalize don't cause more problems than they solve. Take off your helmet in the bedroom. Inventory yourself and see if you, like Athena, underestimate the power of the feminine heart or emotional intelligence. Keep that mind connected to your heart. Ask for help when you need it, and divine answers will reveal themselves. You can think through this situation with a combination of rigorous logic and a real curiosity about the truth, all connected to an open heart. Oh, thank you, Jackie, for the phonetics. I love it. Um, Connect your head with your heart. That's how to make best use of this Grand Cross. Uh, use your logic to think through, like what is the logical way to handle this situation? I do feel a lot of emotion coming off of this, this energy of the Grand Cross. And Pallas Athena is here to help you make a wise decision. I'm just looking at the, is that the moon right here surrounded by that like rainbow orb? Open heart is the key. Yep, coming into Leo season, using that logic. I'm not getting much from this card. I'm not gonna be honest, or I, I am gonna be honest. I'm going to be honest. Thank you for helping me to understand this card. I was lost. I'm a little lost with this one too, not gonna lie. Um, Cause I don't know much about Pallas Athena. She is another, ooh, not an asteroid. Is she an asteroid, a comet? Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't dive into that. Like there's Athena, Ceres, Juno. I can't remember what they're even called. They're different uh, bodies in astrology. Can you repeat the part about not arguing or over intellectualizing? Just don't overdo the intellectual defenses. Make sure your intelligence and ability to rationalize don't cause more problems than they solve. Take off that bedroom, or take off your helmet in that bedroom. Inventory yourself and see if you, like Athena, underestimate the power of the feminine heart or emotional intelligence. I love it. Yeah, I feel like this this is saying connect your head with your heart and, and let logic be led by the heart, by the emotional intelligence like a clearing your mind through living through the heart. But let's see how the others come into play.
Emily says, stop overthinking and believe in your female power. Definitely resonates with me. Helen, logic led by the heart. Interesting. Caroline, I feel personally called out because I love to intellectually bypass hard things. What is your heart telling you, right? What are your emotions telling you about those hard things? Card number two, how to make best use of this grand cross brings us the Virgo card. And the message is digest. Symbolized by a woman and goddess holding a sheaf of wheat, <clears throat> the mutable earth sign Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Wheat can only feed the multitudes once the grain is sorted from the chaff. Virgo is connected to the nervous system and the intestinal tract, the job of which is to sort nutrients from waste. Look for the grain and release the chaff. Weed, harvest, sort. Something in this situation needs to be sorted, edited, or reorganized in order to bring in its harvest, whether you're asking about a relationship, a work project, or the culture in which you work. Virgo wants you to be specific, sort and release a habit, not a person, and change how you interact, but not necessarily with whom you interact. Examine the situation for the patterns that need to be released and composted, and what seeds need to be saved for another time or planted for the next season. Rather than focusing on faults, Appreciate what is valuable about each interaction, opportunity, and person. Truly absorb the wealth and wonder and be healed thereby. It may take time, it may be time to take an introspective break and work on your self care routine. Look at your diet and healthy habits to see what needs improvement. Absorb vitality. This world is gloriously complex. Virgo encourages us how to see the details fit together. Virgo encourages us to see how the details fit, fit together, how the leaves and twigs make up a forest. Light and shadow co-create our image of the whole. Rather than judge the worth of the part, pay attention to the necessary role each piece plays. The shaft protects wheat so it can grow and therefore has value even though it's not edible. Perceive not just with your mind, but with mind, heart, and soul together. That clarified the first card for me. Uh, this is about sorting, decluttering, weeding. Looking at the situation and, and just looking at what's taking up space. There's a lot going on right now. Grand crosses bring up a lot. So what are you hanging on to that doesn't need to be hung on to anymore? What are you able to um, say thank you for serving a purpose and, and let it go? Say thank you that you, you've done your job. You've brought me to where I need to be. You've taught me a lot of lessons. I am no longer in need of you. And this isn't a person. I love this card because it makes it very clear, like it's not the other person's fault. It's something within you that's ready to be released. It's not the other person's fault. I love it. Time to release everything but my kitty. <laughs> yes, I am Marie Kondoing, you guys. She's the, um, the feng shui, right? The minimalist uh, house person. Yeah. All right, let's do card number three. And then we also have one last deck as well. So card number three, how to make the best use of this grand cross energy, points us to the midheaven, the pinnacle. The midheaven contains clues about how your family trained you to be visible in the world, your relationship to other people's authority, and how you step into your own personal authority. It describes the future mountaintop, the pinnacle of your work in the world. 
The midheaven is the highest point of the chart, where the sun would be at midday. This most public, visible point of the chart acts like a flagpole on top of your personal castle. Inventory your professional reputation and ask what you can do to strengthen it. Update your website. Look at your definition of success and make sure it is your own. Actually makes you happy and is not one you have inherited from your family or mentors. Think about the training you've received from these authorities and notice where it still serves you and where you need to release their preconceptions and step into something bigger. You may need to go back to hidden dreams or reawaken an ambition that may not make sense to anybody else. If you choose not to seek your sense of accomplishment as reflected in the outer world, your midheaven can speak of a quieter sense of personal authority. This is your life. Define the mountaintop for yourself. Take a next step in that direction. Underneath all worldly sense of ambition is a soul's longing to live out its potential. Listen to the call. Beliefs. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Weed out, weed out um, what you are. This is like exactly what I was talking about before. What are you going towards that you're just like, oh, this is what I was raised to do. This is what my parents did. This is what I'm going to do. Like, what are you doing that's not yours? What are you striving for that's not your belief? That's not your authentic want and desire? What is it that you're reaching for that it's you're reaching for it because society told you to reach for it? or you're reaching for it because your parents strongly suggested that you reach for that. Just look at it. You know, you might be on the right track. You might not be. It's better to look at it and digest it, <laughs> digest it to make sure that it's your true intention to reach the pinnacle of whatever you want in your lifetime. Um, so this don't get confused. Like this card talks about like your career, your public standing. It could be that. It could be your inner authority as well. Just like what is the pinnacle of your life? What is the highest point of your life? Are you reaching for it because you've been told to do so? Oh my gosh, North Node Aries. Or is it because it's what you truly want for yourself? I love it. So how do you how do we make best use of this Cardinal Grand Cross, this makes more sense now. So Athena wants us to think. Athena wants us to use logic that started in the heart. So there's some emotions that are coming up with how um, stuck we feel right now. So use those emotions to feed your mind. Like, not anxiety mind, but logical mind. Think through, right? Use your, your logical sense, what you can get rid of to help you reach your authentic pinnacle. Does that make sense? Um, Jackie, can you reread about define your own mountain at the end? Yes. <clears throat> you may need to go back to hidden dreams or reawaken an ambition that may not make sense to anybody else. If you choose not to seek your sense of accomplishment as reflected in the outside world, your midheaven can speak of a quieter sense of personal authority. This is your life. Define the mountaintop for yourself. Take a next step in that direction. Namaste, Malika. Yeah, so this is, um, define what you want. You are the main character in your life. Oh my goodness. So the nodes of the moon just moved into Aries and Libra. South node in Libra is literally about releasing people-pleasing tendencies. Releasing the need to just go with the flow, to follow the status quo, as to not rock the boat. Like, wow. This Cardinal Grand Cross directly connected to the nodes of the moon that just moved back into Aries and Libra earlier this week, uh, this, this reading is saying like, all right, get clear on what you're ready to let go of. Like what, 
other, whose beliefs are you following? Maybe pause and think. Whose beliefs are you following? Caroline. Okay, so maybe if my tendencies are to rock the boat and do the opposite of what everyone says, especially my parents, could it be looking at a rebellion, maybe? If, yeah, I mean, rebellion is the natural step in order to detach from other people's desires, right? Like, I, I'm a rebel. I did nothing what my family told me to do, and I am way better off. Yeah, rebellion doesn't have to be bad. Rebellion is just standing up for yourself and finding your inner warrior, North Node Aries. Malika, also feeling I'm finally moving away from extremes of emotions, which had been paralyzing me emotionally for the last three months. Well, look at you. Good job. Helen, yeah, whose beliefs are you following? Totally is definitely a rebel. Yes. Um, so that was the first deck. We're going to pull one culminating card um, with all these retrogrades happening. So that, that first little spread was how to best use the Grand Cross, the Cardinal Grand Cross. Logically think through, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So here's like a little practice. This just came up. Um, write out your goals. What am I working towards? I'm working towards creating this much money per year. I'm working towards having this type of family. I'm working towards having this job. I'm working towards having this kind of life. Um, just write it out. What, what are you already on your way to do? Logic. Write it out. Athena. Then, take some time. Pause. Pause. This is a pause time. Go through each of those goals and say, like, is this what I want? Or am I doing this because this is what I've been trained to do? Do I? I. Do I want this? Or am I doing this because this is what's expected of me? All right, so that's where this Midheaven card comes in. Am I reaching for this pinnacle because it's what I desire for myself? Or am I reaching for this pinnacle because someone else told me that that's the best I could do? And then, strip away what is not in alignment with you. And decide what it is that you want for yourself. Because you, you, you get to decide. You get to decide what you get in this life. And if you choose to follow someone else's path, um, it's not going to be fulfilling. It might be like 60, 70% fulfilling, but you get to choose to be 100% fulfilled in your life. So uh, I think this is a really cool setup. So the second question I wanted to ask from this Healing Spirits Oracle, uh, because we have Venus retrograde starting tomorrow and we have Chiron retrograde starting on Sunday. So this, uh, these retrograde phases, especially Venus and Chiron, it's a time for reviewing what we've attracted into our life. Venus retrograde, reviewing what you desire. Oh my gosh, and that's what the reading wants us to do anyway. Um, and it's also Chiron retrograde, reviewing what wounds are holding us back from being independent. Are you guys seeing how this all relates? My mind is like blowing over and over. So the Healing Spirits Oracle, and we're gonna ask, what's up for review? Like, what is it that we're reviewing? What, what does our highest guide ask that we review during these retrogrades? So feel free to send your energy into this deck Asking, what is up for review? Just one card from this deck. And if you've been enjoying today's session, if you'd like to drop a donation, they're always appreciated. Uh, if you haven't followed me yet on Insight Timer, you can follow me here. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel where I post all of these replays. Uh, a lot of a lot of words come out during these lives, so I record them and I throw them up on YouTube. So you could just search my name. I'm pretty easy to find across the internet. I have a pretty unique name. Um, yeah, 
Facebook. I'm on uh, Lakeside Living is my business Facebook. I'm not too active there, so. Uh, uh, but TikTok. I do have my TikTok astrology stuff that I put out when I have the time. What else? Um, I do one-on-one -on -one sessions on a donation basis. So if you'd like to work with me, have your chart read, have a card reading, um, if you just need. So yeah, I recently moved my business to donation basis and it's great because there's so much freedom because it's less of like, hey, I need a Reiki session. So I'm signing up for Reiki and that's it. Um, no, it's more like, hey, Jackie, my life sucks. What do you think I should do? And then we figure it out, and it's cool, and it's free. Not free, like the, like the, the energy is free. There's no constraints. So uh, my link tree is in my Insight Timer bio. So feel free to check out my link tree. Uh, to, my website is in there, so you can book with me, and all that stuff. Helen, I want a reading about why my life sucks. <laughs> Your life doesn't suck, it's just difficult right now. Thank you, Jackie, for your donation. Very much appreciated. Helen, thank you. I always forget to invite people to embody astrology. So actually, come on guys, more energy. Send it. What's up for review? What is up for review? Maybe we don't want to know what's up for review. Maybe we're so stuck in our ways. We don't want to know what's up for review. Um, so Embody Astrology is my Patreon monthly group. Uh, we meet twice at least every zodiac season, and I give you guys ways to embody the energies available from the current zodiac season, wherever the sun is. So that's a fun place to be. It's a nice little community. Uh, yeah. Links for that are in my link tree as well. All right, what is up for review? Oops. This is card number 28. The message is, success isn't what you have, it's what you do with what you have. Your life is about to move in new directions. But don't be in a hurry to conquer everything in a short space of time. Spirit sages teach that success is to be enjoyed and understood. Therefore, it must be allowed to open slowly, like a flower whose blossom is enjoyed for much longer when it opens naturally and with the right elements, when it follows nature. Enjoy each step of the journey to your full potential, and don't just look for the outcomes. The process is often greater than the lesson. Short and sweet, love this deck. What's up for review? Um, review your gratitude. Are you grateful for what you have right now? Are you grateful for the progress that you've made already? Even though you might not have the outcome, like that's the end goal, that's the pinnacle, that's, you know, like, this doesn't, uh, whatever. The butterfly, when the butterfly finally transforms into the butterfly, it only has a couple days before it's gone. Like the process, the cocoon, the, the, the whole transformation is the fun part, it is the journey. Success isn't what you have, it's what you do with what you have. I love this. Are those hands? Yeah, those are hands. You have the potential also, like you have the energy, you have the ether. You have the ability to make whatever you want with your life. What are you doing with what you have? Are you wishing that it were more? Or are you utilizing everything you have the best that you know how? Yeah, I like that slowly opening flower also. Um, there's, another, there's another quote that I've come across like, flowers don't rush each other, like they don't compete with each other, they just bloom. And even if the one next to 
the flower is blooming faster, like that doesn't make the slow flower any less pretty. It's nature. It's flowing with nature. That's my intention with Embody Astrology. It's, it's learning how to use the energies available to us to flow with the universe instead of fighting against it and trying to rush it and trying to get to the end goal. My husband used to have a saying, and I, I paused before I said that because I was going to call him out, but I feel like he's been saying it less, which makes me really happy. Uh, but he used to say like, oh, and then if this gets done, I'll be happy. And it's, you know, he doesn't like actually mean it like that, but it's just one of those like, that's just, it flows off of his mouth and it would make me so angry. Like, why aren't you just happy now? <laughs> like, why do you need this room to be clean before you could be happy? Like, why aren't you just happy now? Uh, catch yourself. What are you doing? What are you, what are you waiting? Are you waiting for happiness? What are you waiting for? You have every reason to be happy now. There's a lot of things in your life that you can be happy with now. Why do you need that? I'm going to bring it up again. A book, a book, a book. You guys want a book? It's called Happy for No Reason. Happy for No Reason by Marcy S. something. The last time I mentioned it, someone in the chat knew what it was called. Um, but that book, I read it years and that was literally the first book when I decided that I'm going to turn my life around. That's the book that encouraged me to start my gratitude list. Um, I honestly, I read it so long ago, I don't remember what the, the book says. Uh, happy for no reason. And that's literally what it's about. It's, it teaches you how to be happy without needing a reason to be happy. The information on this book is already in our spiritual community. Scroll back. Thank you. By uh, Susie just put it in the chat. It's by Marcy Shymoff. Ooh, yeah, what if, what if all the stress and pressure that you're placing on yourself right now to achieve, right? There's a lot of like, what are you trying to achieve? What are you trying to force into your life to be happy? Is that even what you want? Or is that what you've been conditioned to want? Think about it. If you're not feeling fulfilled and like if you're not feeling good enough, think about what you can let go of that belongs to other people. Thank you guys so much for being here. It was wonderful to uh, share this message with you guys. When am I back? Ooh, that's right. Oh my goodness. I am so excited. I took next week off. Um, it's been a lot. It's been a lot lately. So I will be back one week from today on Friday when Mercury moves into Virgo. So take what resonated from today, leave the rest. You don't need to have all the details. Just whatever, whatever resonated is what you're meant to hear today. Thank you all for your energy. Thank you for the donations. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for repeating things in the chat so other people can see it <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I will see you guys on Friday next week pause as much as you can. I know, um, you know, we have these obligations and we have these responsibilities in our life. <clears throat> how much of them are necessary and how much of them are just there to make us feel like we're doing enough? Oh, uh, thanks, Christine. I already forgot. Yeah, we'll be on the bikes all day tomorrow. Very excited. Sending love to everybody. Love to all. Namaste. Thank you all for your support and everything. <laughs>